here I went to school. You can't even see them, but my invisible childhood footprints are all over here, crisscrossing those of my three youngest children. Perhaps yours as well. The grey school is gone now, but I can still see it in my mind's eye. Residential housing is here now. And as I was following my invisible footprints from my school days, I came across Mary, Maisie and Pauline sitting in the place where my classroom used to be. I wondered how our footprints had crisscrossed each other over the years and I wish I'd had time to stay and listen to their stories. I was never in this part of the school, this red building, the red school. It was like for P7s when I was there and I was too wee. But decades later, I got into the building because it was partly turned into a nursery for my wee boy, Lewis. A couple of weeks ago, I saw him standing here looking at the, the nursery playground and he turned round to me and he said, I miss being at nursery, Dad. He could see his own invisible footprints. Preston Pans has the footprints of people from many years ago and here many of them rest with their stories perhaps long forgotten, perhaps sometimes remembered. Some lost their life in a famous battle. Others lived their life in a battle to survive. Here's another place where my childhood footprints overlay those of my younger children. I was in the Scouts here. My daughters went to Rainbows. What a place this is, the Pans. A thousand years of history and the working class people who made it are quite literally the salt of the earth. When I walk here, I'm not just walking in the shadow of my own footprints from childhood. I'm walking in the footsteps of those who literally built the Industrial Revolution. When you walk on this old road, you're walking on the footprints of hundreds of years, thousands of people. If only it could tell me the stories of all those who have walked on this ancient road. Ah, <sighs> some things I'll just never understand.
the turret. What better place to admire the location of the pans next to the sea? Gorgeous. Ah, well, no point in getting angry. Anger is just litter in the soul. Best to bin it. part of the high street some famous historic characters lived. But once also a storyteller called Michael, a soulmate and a very good friend. I doubt there is a person in the pans who hasn't at some time been woken up by the squawking as seagulls. They are part of our story too. Here, there was once a gate led up to some steps to a wee church that's no longer here although there's evidence of it if you look carefully you can't see it but I can there's my house front garden and there where that tree is and the fencing my back garden where me and my two wee brothers used to play. And here the entrance to the drive that took you to the back of the church and where I used to close the gate for my dad. Across the road, path on the green hills, is where I learned to cycle. It's also exactly the place where my youngest daughter, Skye, also learned to cycle during the first lockdown last year. And how many people have memories of sledging down this hill? The boatyard where my dad used to keep Tangus, the boat that he made himself. My senses still expect to see the two chimneys when I reach the top of this hill. Of course, they're long gone. The Green Hill is a place in our childhood we come and play. It's a place of imagination as well.
There used to be perhaps a melancholy feeling here, a feeling that something we'd all been used to had gone, had vanished. That feeling, for me anyway, has been replaced by a sense of excitement and expectation of what is possible here, of what could happen if people come together and say they want it. One of the problems is we're so used to being told that there's no unauthorised entry that we're not allowed to access our own doorstep. But there is a dream, you know, that could become real. This amazing place where we live with a thousand years of industry also has something else really special. It's location by the sea. The dream is a vision of the 360 centre. If you've not heard of it, you should look into it. Imagine the green hills displaying magnificent statues celebrating our industrial past. This industrial site being accessible in a place of environmental education and industry where jobs and learning combine to celebrate the fantastic natural setting of Preston Pan's Kikinsey and Port Seton. It would be the jobs of the future based on renewable energy and actually using and celebrating the legacy of the past. We can show this beautiful coastline is something that we can all enjoy, the whole community with our families. History's just all around you here. Towers of the past penetrate the rooftops of Preston Pans. But what you no longer see now are the pit heads, the salt pans, brickworks, soap, soap works. But look carefully and the remains of old buildings tell you the stories of yesteryear. Windows where people used to look out that are now blocked up. And on the beach. The past still lies waiting to be discovered and found. Legend tells us that the town of Preston Pans was originally founded by a shipwrecked Viking pirate. Preston Pans is literally born from the sea.
and on its shore lies Johnny Moat, toppled from his throne on the girdle rocks a few years ago. He seems forgotten, but maybe he's just biding his time. Waiting for us to take action and realise our dream. Well, the past is everywhere you look in this old wee tune. But so is the future. Most of our children's footprints, well, they're still to be made. What kind of place would we wish for them? My future. My future. It's not about me. It's not about you even. It's about our kids and our grandkids and about their future. Thank you, Dad. Mm -hmm.